Hello and welcome to the Midday. I'm Stephen Romo with your news update. The job losses brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic are trending lower, but there's still a sign of how bad we're struggling. The Labor Department says 1.8 million people fired for filed for unemployment last week. This means 42 million people have applied for unemployment in the 11 weeks since the virus hit. The monthly unemployment report comes out tomorrow. Well, join us to talk about the latest on COVID-19 is Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ashton. We, of course, so glad to have you here. And for days now, we've been seeing thousands marching shoulder to shoulder for this protest. A lot of people don't have masks on. A lot of people have referenced concerns about this. Uh, what do you think about the, the chances of spreading the virus that way? Well, there's a definitely cause for concern, Stephen, amongst infectious, infectious disease specialists, public health officials, epidemiologists. When you talk about the four elements or factors that put people at risk for getting or spreading COVID-19, it's time, more than 10 or 15 minutes, place where you are, whether you're indoors or outdoors, space apart, and we know these are densely populated um, protests and demonstrations, and how many people are there. So all of those factors play a role. And um, so, of course, there's a concern that we may see cases. Remember, average symptoms appear five days after exposure, but could be as much as two weeks later. Definitely something to watch out for and talking about vaccines. Now we've heard all sorts of timelines, but earlier this week, Dr. Fauci said it could be the end of the year when we get one. How optimistic are you about that? Well, I really encourage people, Stephen, to think like a doctor or scientist when they hear any headline that has to do with a vaccine or this virus for that matter, which is um, it's not all or none. Things are evolving. They're changing. We're learning more every single day. Um, there are, you know, well over 70 companies and groups racing to develop a vaccine in record time. There are maybe four or five kind of leading the pack right now. But what Dr. Fauci has said repeatedly is that as we go into phase three clinical trials, which typically involves testing tens of thousands of people uh, here in the U.S., we have to know that the vaccine is safe, but we also have to know it's effective. And he recently reiterated concerns, not that it would be effective in the short term, but something called durability. So how long that protection may last. Other coronaviruses tell us that may be only about a year, so we just don't know. In terms of the timeline, land speed record, Stephen, for vaccine development to this point has been four years. Mm. So if we see something by December, January, February, that would be a record. Wow, long way to go, it sounds like there. Well, COVID-19, we understand, is not the only health crisis happening right now. Doctors overseas dealing with a different kind of outbreak? Well, we ha we've learned and relearned from this pandemic, Stephen, that we have to be concerned with infectious disease outbreaks occurring in other parts of the world. And right now, a lot of eyes on DRC in the Congo that are dealing with an uptick in their Ebola cases. They're hovering around nine, at least nine cases right now, and they had eradicated Ebola or claimed the outbreak was under control just recently. So that's being followed closely. And DRC has one of the world's largest measles outbreaks right now with well over 6,000 deaths. So again, global health, important to keep an eye on what's happening in other parts of the world too. Absolutely, and Dr. Ashton, your insights and perspective have been a calming trend throughout this entire ordeal. So we thank you so much for your input. All right, let's check in with meteorologist Kevin Roth. Talk about tropical depression Cristobal, and that's a change because earlier this morning it was tropical storm Cristobal. It has weakened into a tropical depression. These are positive trends. That's what we want to see. We want to see this storm weaken as it moved over land in Mexico, Guatemala. We've seen the maximum winds now just 35 miles per hour. That's down from much stronger winds earlier. The issue is it's going to make that northerly turn here. It's going to wind up back in the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, it will be re-strengthening once it gets over those warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. The track keeps it north here, and most models kind of converging, starting to agree on a path into central Louisiana that would unfortunately put the eastern side of the storm, which is the strongest portion of the storm, into an area like New Orleans. But for us, this has been great news, what we've seen with the model trends just trending a little bit farther east. 
Houston is no longer in that cone of uncertainty, but that doesn't mean we should let our guard down. We should still be watching this system here because uh, we're still pretty far away. This earliest impacts would likely be Monday if we're going to see any impacts from the storm. So there still is time for this to change. Everyone should stay weather aware, stay alert. And we'll keep you up to date right here on ABC 13 and ABC 13.com. Stephen. All right. Also follow Kevin on his social media pages. He's keeping us updated every time we get a new development. And that's going to do it for the midday. I'm Stephen Romo. Hope you have a good day.